while we are on our first version of the JRM1 mostly focused on the outer design, this time we take a absolutely new approach with focusing of lightweight construction and also optimizing the inner ducting. The lightweight construction begins already on the outer shape. The new version here in gray is much cleaner designed. You see there are not so much obstacles or little hills on the outside and this gives us less area and this means less weight. Having decided that our JRM jet was too large, Renee and I went through the process of scaling down the aircraft and getting it to some uh, new proportions, still keeping all the uh, fans and internal components the same. One of the key changes was the overall length and scaling of the jet. So it could have been a simple exercise of just shrinking our original model down. Um, however, we decided there were certain areas of the jet that required uh, some serious weight reduction. And one area was the tail area here. So we've reduced and sliced out 61 millimeters off the rear of the jet. Towards the front, um, we've also looked at a new cockpit layout. This is currently the, still the old cockpit, but um, it will change. And we've also widened the jet, which had a significant impact on the way uh, the 3D model was going to be redeveloped. After having been forced to rethink and resize our JRM model, biggest challenge was to rebuild and redesign the jet from ground up. Uh, in doing so, we took this as an opportunity to review the way the jet design was developed. And this time around, we started off with the ducts, ensuring that they were nice and smooth and clean in uh, design internally. Previously it was an afterthought or not so much an afterthought but a, a secondary process whereas in this instance we use uh, the duct as the basis of uh, the development of the jet. Here you can see the nose um, or the intakes were optimized based on sizes that Rene has tested in the past um, and from there we developed the wing section or the root of the wing and the front strake over the intake and from there a wider body was developed, as you can see, using the 2D CAD profile that we um, worked on to resize and reshape the jet as the basis and the fundamentals of our 3D modeling. Um, getting it to a point where around the cockpit area now, a wider cockpit and a, a wider front fuselage, we want a larger duct fan, lift fan in the nose section, um, creates quite a bit of um, a geometrical uh, difficulties in trying to keep a nice appealing look of the front cockpit area but then also having it work in multiple views and you can see here the challenges of trying to smooth the geometry out and get it to flow and work in a way that is uh, aesthetic as well as functional. In developing the design we go through a number of iterations and saved files uh, in some instances, we wish to save the geometry at a point where we are happy and therefore uh, save it as a parasolids file and then import that uh, as a file in which a lot of the surface geometry and all the feature tree elements are lost. So it just becomes a solids model, which we can then work with. Um, in this instance, the body now is getting detailed to the point where the front swooping elements around the intake are trying to be resolved. Still not happy with the um, shoulder or the, the back section of the intake flowing over into the cockpit area. We are quite happy with the uh, cockpit or canopy uh, geometry at the moment. So in this instance I haven't mirrored that front section. But here you can see the canopy transition between the body is much nicer and it's uh, has a much nicer, more rounded shape. Uh, this is something that both Renee and I spend quite a bit of time on in trying to optimize and detail these features, which are very subtle, but they have a huge impact on the way the jet is um, accepted and, and seen as a resolved product. To get an appreciation of the design changes we've made, we've overlaid the JRM01 with our JRM01B. And in this view now, we can see the overall size uh, difference, which will hopefully uh, provide significant weight uh, changes. Also noticeable are the changes to the nose and the cockpit region, the intakes, 
the position of the wing and the, uh, the height of the wing. We've also added a bit of um, angle to our wing in this instance. The previous wing design was very flat and straight and here we've added a bit of uh, incidence, angle of incidence. Uh, the tail section, um, the elevons have been increased in width. When Rene printed these out, they were far too thin on our first uh, model. So the thickness and the root uh, connection with the jet has been increased considerably. And we've also increased the thickness of our uh, vertical stabilizers or our, our rudder fins there. And you can see the difference there. We're wanting to incorporate and fit the servos in a much uh, wider profile for those rudders. Um, all in all, the character of the jet has been maintained. However, it is visible as a totally new design and um, harking from some of the elements of our earlier model. One of the key areas that we've been focused on is trying to clean up some of this underside geometry and on the new 3D model, it's a much cleaner and more rationalized form. Um, all in all, we are very happy with the way this is coming uh, together. And the new JRM01B uh, is going to be an exciting um, second stage two in our development of this vertical takeoff and landing RC jet. In addition to reducing the size of our jet to try and save weight, Rene and I are investigating ways in which we can save uh, weight on individual components. In this particular instance, I went through an exercise of trying to see how we could develop parts of the model uh, in such a way that um, we can save weight. The biggest challenge here was to create a model that would print in a vase mode or vase mode and um, just have the print nozzle travel around the perimeter profile of the wing without uh, skipping or jumping to internal details. And as a result, um, this process or this technique uh, was learnt uh, from a, a video on the net, a link um, below, Rene will provide that link. It was done by Tom Stanton, uh, inspired by his approach. And in this instance, what happened is we, we slice and dice the original profile of the wing with punctures through it, so we actually get individual chambers of uh, the inner uh, honeycomb effect and then we subtract that from the outer uh, wing profile which is kind of a counterintuitive approach but what you end up with is a wing profile that is sliced through externally and we have cuts and slices through it and the slices are designed in such a way that the g-code of the printer will recognize the outer profile and print around the outer profile and join up in the center and this is a technique that uh, i used to print out one of the wings and i'm comparing it to a solid wing or a, um, a wing that is a solid model but using just the bamboo studio settings for a gyroid infill and um, it's kind of interesting to see the uh, the output and also the results of both processes. Uh, one of the things that Rene has been discovering is that uh, by just punching holes through profiles uh, does not necessarily save weight. It actually creates extra wall sections and extra wall structures internally, which increases the weight of the part. Why we will go on with the details of the wing construction, for instance, let's take a look how we did the resizing and redesign in detail on our JRM1. At first, we go to a graphic program for 2D, just to take a look on uh, the upper shape. And then we were shortening the fuselage and also redesigning the elevators to make them more big in size, to get better pitch momentum. Also, we did the same for the vertical stabilizers cause of the um, smaller momentum they get now caused by the shorter fuselage they had to be swept to the aft and this causes also redesign of the rudder itself to make it still fit and here we see one of our main issues this was the whole ducting it starts on the inlet which was too small and not good designed and goes till to the end of the nozzles. 
So we decided to start with the new JRM with the ducting, because this is the main part of our jet. Trust is absolutely important and here we can see the layout from the side and also the upper and we designed at very first the inlets and also the duct tubes to be sure that they fit this time perfectly in our whole design and we got enough extra space if we have to tune them afterwards. And this looks really nice, this time we also used big radiuses not these sharp edges because they are much more efficient for EDF installation. Next step was designing the root rib. This time we use a much thicker airfoil. This is an Naka 2413, so 2% thicker than the last one. Mainly we use this for better installation of the wing fans that they are completely covered in the shape of the airfoil. And this was also the first step of designing the fuselage. This starts on the root rib and we work step by step uh, to the center line of the fuselage. And this starts also with a very difficult part. And this is the strake, this little wing over the inlet of the ducting. This, is, this has a very complex shape. So we did uh, many approaches to design it uh, lightweight on the one side and aerodynamically on the other side. And after this was done, we could start with the, the main shape of the fuselage. You can see here we draw a line and then lofted the areas to the wing part. And so step by step, our JRM1 version B became shape. Yeah, and this was followed by redesigning the canopy. This is an absolutely important part of every jet. It gives us its unique shape. And this took us also several approaches. Here you can see something we had a trouble on our last version. This was the, the elevator, which was um, tackling the, the rudder. But this time we make sure that they have a deflection of over 45 degree to each side without um, hitting each other. And also this looks nice as a version of an air brake with these two uh, rudder spreaded. Yeah, and this is a very special part for Mark. I spent a lot of time to design this upper cone of the vertical stabilizers. I think this is one of his specialties. Thank you very much for watching the video. In the next part, we will dive much deeper into lightweight printing and test a lot of different structures. So, and if you'd like to support the channel, you will find the links underneath. I wish you a perfect day and see you in the next video. Bye bye.